I'm increasing the volume. What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today we're going to build a subwoofer. And I suspect a lot of people will be interested in this subject because we're going to use a cheap subwoofer. The idea is to buy the cheapest subwoofer we can find and build a box with very few compromises for that particular subwoofer. First thing we need to do is find ourselves a cheap sub. I'm going to go for a 12 inch subwoofer. So if you go to my favorite sites for buying speaker drivers, sound imports for Europe and parts express for US, we can see that they both agree about the cheapest sub, the GRS, 12 SW4. Let's see what we have to work with. Well, wouldn't you know it, a high QTS driver, my favorite. And if you didn't catch it from my tone, I was sarcastic. Because this indeed isn't good news. It basically means that the response won't be perfectly flat, but I don't mind a bit, uh, a bit of ripple when it comes to a subwoofer. Anyway, the actual bad part is that we have to build a big box. This is a no compromise enclosure and making the box bigger doesn't cost much extra, so big box it is. They even recommend 1.5 cubic feet for sealed and 2.5 cubic feet for bass reflex. Hmm, why not? Both 2.5 cubic feet, it's like 70 liters. I think I can manage a four folder bandpass box for this sub at around 70 liters. After playing around with the numbers, I came up with this slight ripple in the response, plays down to 30 hertz, goes up to 90. Nothing to complain here, we have a 40 plus 35 liter a 75 liter box. Note that this is the net volume, so the actual external size will be larger. Use the four inch port or 10 centimeters and at uh, 100 watts of power, the air velocity is below 20 meters per second. So there shouldn't be any issues with port noise. The next thing we need to discuss is details about the port. We can choose between a circular port and a rectangular one. And since this is a no compromise box, I kind of demand a circular one. I don't want to get into too much detail, but the circular port is better than the rectangular one. While the port area is the same, the circumference is smaller and therefore less area for the air to drag onto. I just made some oversimplification about the matter, but you get the idea. The subwoofer is rated at only 120 watts, so limited output. From the little that we have, we want to keep as much as possible. So even though a circular port costs some money and a rectangular port which is more or less free since you can make it from whatever material you are making the box we will stick with the circular port the box itself is easy to build i'm using 18 millimeter thick mdf make the cutout for the speaker and for the port i'm also making a rectangular brace which i will place in the seal chamber glue the box together except for one side panel as we need an opening to place the speaker inside. I'm adding some damping material into the seal chamber. This is some recycled clothes or something. Not exactly cheap, don't know why, but you can use whatever, pillow filling, spongy stuff, whatever you have available. You can go ahead and fill the chamber. I'm just filling it till the brace because this stuff is above average density. Next, we mount the speaker and before we seal the box, I like to explain my method. I've drilled some holes and I'm going to use silicone sealant and screws instead of wood glue. I'm going to get some backlash because of this. However, I like to do it like this because it works. With a bit of hassle, I can get this side panel off and access the speaker if I want to. Stick a blade between the panels and cut the silicone. If you're worried about the performance, trust me, the silicone seals well and keeps the panel in place like regular glue. Only issue is that after a few years, the silicone deteriorates and you probably need to reapply. Do whatever you want, just be aware if you use wood glue and need to access the speaker, you need to destroy the box. There are other solutions to this problem, but this one is the easiest to implement. Now it's time for the port. 
The length of the port is calculated to be at 18 centimeters. But the beauty of using circular ports is that we can tune it after the box is finished. We can take it out, cut it to size and try again. This is compared to a rectangular port where you can't do anything about it. Since the default tube is pretty long, I cut it into three different sizes and we are going to test each one of them plus the port with just the flares and no tube at all. If we look at the measurements, the one with the short tube looks the best. It's the one which is the most linear. Actually, if you compare it to the model response, it looks very similar. The difference is that the model resonant frequency is 51 Hertz. And let's see what we got. If we look at the impedance response, and try to identify the resonant frequency. It's the dip between the two peaks. If you find the dip too wide, just look for the point where the face is close to zero. And this is at 45 Hertz, which is slightly different from our modeled 51 Hertz. Why does this happen? Several reasons. The driver doesn't have the exact specs found in the parameter sheet. We placed damping material in the sealed chamber and we have no idea how much absorption that produces. We don't know what is the air leakage of our box. It's not something new with high order boxes. You model the response, but expect some adjustments after you finish the box. Measuring equipment helps. In this case, we didn't do any actual modifications. We just know that the resonant frequency is actually slightly lower. To me, the response with the port uh, with just the flares is also fine. If you're lazy and don't want to do any cutting, use that port. So we got the response that we wanted. We can see some mumbo jumbo here, which is something to take note of. You could completely ignore it and rely on the low pass filter to eliminate them if you set it low enough, or you could use some damping material on the walls of the ported chamber to reduce them significantly. If we take a look at the response with damping material, some peaks are reduced by 10 decibels, which is great. While the playable range of the subwoofer looks identical and no useful frequencies are absorbed. In conclusion, we made a box for a cheap sub, it plays from 30 Hz to 90 Hz. The response does have a 4 dB ripple. Some ripple is unavoidable since this is a high QTS speaker. However, this is a low power subwoofer and having the um, extra efficiency at low frequencies is mainly a pro, not a con. And now the moment you are waiting for. We're going to have some fun and place this sub inside a car and thrash it with the full force of a hundred watts and see how many dBs it scores. And now I'm inside the car and let me explain the setup a bit. I have my GoPro over here so I can show you what, uh, what we have here. So our measurement equipment, I think it's exactly the one used in the SPL competitions, the Term Lab magnum and it's set up with uh, the probes as well so we get the 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 power with feed to the subwoofer and the sub is over here now the explanation is why i placed it uh, on the rear bench is, is because this car is a sedan obviously since this is a low power subwoofer you don't want to place it in the trunk of the of a sedan I'm guessing you're gonna use it in a hatchback or a wagon, something that uh, has the uh, trunk communicating with the inside cabin. Because otherwise the rear bench will dampen the sound too much. And we don't have uh, too much of it because this is a low power cheap subwoofer. So now all we have to do is do an SPL measurement and see how it scores. So first we have to start the measuring device it helps a lot when doing a measurement and now we're going to uh, increase the volume for this 35 hertz test tone and uh, see what we get i'm increasing the volume
can hear the subwoofer struggling a bit, so I'm going to dial it down. So we got 124 decibels at 25 watts. I don't know if that, that's impressive or just uh, average, but it is impressive to me because it's kind of loud in the car with such a cheap subwoofer. And um, if you're making the argument that um, this is a test tone, I uh, use the normal tracks to test this subwoofer and indeed uh, to get uh, this kind of score uh, you need to pump up like 100 120 watts which is close to the uh, which is exactly the maximum power of the subwoofer so uh, you need to feed it more power to reach this uh, decibel level with uh, normal music and not the test tones but again it's still 100 watts i don't know if you can find such a small amplifier uh yeah you gotta be careful with the volume otherwise you're gonna burn your little cheap subwoofer so again if um, you like this uh, project and you want to build one for for your own you can find the, all the details in the description i made uh, a post on my website then you find all the panel dimensions and or the all the parts list everything that you need to build it so have fun building this subwoofer if you so desire and i'll see you next time i'm gonna do those pa -pa!